This tutorial is going to be the first of many related to Twitter Bootstrap and designing full-blown websites with lots of uh, great widgets and doohickeys as well as um, thingamabobs for your website. And a lot of this has been done for you and it's just a matter of how do you get this stuff onto your own site and how do you use the power of this framework called Bootstrap. So the first thing you do is you choose your components. I'm going to start with everything. And then later on, if I find I never use alerts, for example, I can always delete that later. And I, I'll show you how after we're done. Okay, so you basically select everything for now and then just customize and download. And it's going to save a zip file. So I got three versions here. What I want to do is extract all these files into my new project. And if you were to look here in the bootstrap, you will see there are three folders. One that has all the CSS you need to begin. One that has a list of icons called glyph icons, and they're in the image folder. And the last part is JavaScript, and this has the bootstrap. This includes jQuery and other items that you can use to make a very powerful website. Basically, you want to extract those three folders, and you can put them into any website project folder you currently have, or you can create a new folder, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a new folder for my Bootstrap project. We're going to call it Bootstrap Projects. Like I said, yeah, exactly. Whew, where does he come up with these things? So you're going to extract your files into that folder. Now, you can, like I said, you can put it in any other project you've done, and that's fine. But I'm just going to put it in there. So hold on a second while I find my zip folder. So you find your zip file, and I'm just going to right-click on it. And I want to extract everything because it's all compressed. So we need to un decompress it, put it in the right folder. I'm going to keep that show extracted files. I'm going to browse to where my new project folder is. Okay, you're looking for the bootstrap project folder you just created in your student folder. And I'm going to click that folder so that I'm selecting the, the project I'm putting it in. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click Extract. And when it's done, it's going to open the folder that has it. So now you can see Bootstrap Project is the name of my folder, and I have the three folders in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put all the HTML files in this main folder. So what you want to do to get started is there's a set of tags that you're going to want. Now, we could uh, code it by hand. I could type it all out. Or you could just go to the Bootstrap Project, click on the Get Started link, scroll down until you see this basic HTML template. And if you look down here, you're going to see to make it a bootstrap, hold on, to make it a bootstrap template, just include the appropriate CSS, JS files, and here is the set of tags that you need to get that to work. So I'm going to copy this and put it into Notepad++, and I'm going to clean it up. Okay, when you copy and paste, unfortunately, it includes all the line numbers, so we're going to have to delete all the little numbered lines, and then I'll do that and show you what that will look like when we're ready to go. So once I've cleaned it up, it'll look like this. So each tag is on its own line. And I'm going to save it. The key here is to save it into your Bootstrap project folder. Since we're going to do three different layouts, why don't you call each one? The first one, we'll call it two column, or you can call it two column layout.html and save it. So you get your nice, pretty color code here. And all of your layouts, I'd like you to do the following. Number one, all script tags are at the end. Okay, so uh, we just learned something new today, folks, and that's Internet Explorer sucks. Oh, wait, no, we knew that all along. Um, the easier way to do this would be through uh, Chrome instead. Okay, what we should have done is gone into Chrome and copied it from there. So let's see if Chrome does a better job than Internet Explorer. Lore. And it does, and it even tabbed it over all pretty like. All right. So from here on out, use Chrome when you copy and paste from Twitter Bootstrap. Okay, so at this point, what we want to do is, uh, my recommendation, it, it's up to you how you want to do it, um, but I like to have all of my content have a left and right hand margin on the side. So I like to wrap everything in a div, or you could use a section tag if you want to keep it all HTML5. Um, let's try that. I'm just going to try it that way. I'm going to give it a section tag, and I am going to give this a class of wrapper. 
So all of my web page will be wrapped in this wrapper here. I don't like all that extra tab. And note how all of our JavaScript tags should be at the bottom of our HTML, the bottom of our web pages. So here we go. We got a section, class of wrapper, and then in our CSS, we can center that, set the width, and be happy about it. Our hello world is inside of basically a header, so let's go ahead and create a header tag for that. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and detabify the body and the head. I don't like it when they tab with, spa with spaces instead of actual tabs, so I'm going to get rid of that. And my script tags can be in the far left. And I'm going to go ahead and also the section, I'm going to keep that all the way back here. So my header one is going to go inside of the header. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is create another section that's going to hold our two columns. And we're going to give this one a class of page. If you give it a different class, that's okay. Just remember what it is that you do. And then inside of the section, you can have an article. And you can have an aside. Now, you can do these as divs if you like. Okay. We're going to go ahead and give these names. So we're going to put on here article. We're going to give it a class of um, main. It could be content also if you want. I'm going to change it to content. And the side, we're going to give it a class of sidebar. And let's go ahead and add, we're going to add a couple of tags in here just to identify them. One thing you'll notice is I made these header ones. And this is a difference between the older way of doing HTML and HTML5 is that anytime you have a, an article or a section or an aside, they could have a header level one as the header because it's level one for the article. It's level one for the aside and level one for header. So it's just a new way of thinking about how we're doing that. And at this point, we have all of our tags in place to do our layout. We just haven't done any of the layout yet. By the way, in case you were watching, yes, I forgot to close my header, but thanks to some of my students, they warned me, and now I fixed it. I remember to close the header. Thank you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make, I'm going to use the row fluid, and here's the cool thing is any block tag, this will work. Notice my section has two tags that are children of the section tag. One is article, one's a side. Yes, I called them children, and no, it's not a sign of affection for coding. That's actually what you would call a tag that's within another tag. By the way, this section is the parent of the article and the aside. So that is standard. So where it says class equals page, we're going to put a space. I'm going to write row fluid. What this does is this establishes the outer container. So any of the children of that section tag now, we can span any number of those 12 spaces. So since we have two of them, these two, the article and the aside, must add up to 12. And you do that by adding span and then the number. So if we're going to have a two-column layout, the main column, the main content column, this article with a class of content, should span more than half the width. You could give it a span of 7 or a span of 8 or even a span of 9. We're going to try 8 for now. And then on our sidebar, where it has class equals sidebar, we're going to put a space and do a span 4. Remember, 4 and 8 add up to 12, and that's what we need to do. So we're going to go ahead and save our changes, and then go ahead and run it. Let's run it in Chrome. However, it should work in Firefox, IE, and Chrome. Let's see if it worked. And as you see here, it most probably worked. We don't know 100%, except for the fact that sidebar is over to the right. And where that starts, that should be roughly, uh, what would that be? 8 twelfths, which would be 4 six or 2 thirds of the window over. So yeah, I can do my math. A couple of things you must be aware of. Number one, you cannot, you cannot introduce an extra tag in between here. 
The moment you throw a paragraph tag right after this article, you will break that layout. So it's really crucial that everything for your content goes inside of this article. This could have been a div as well. So um, what you're probably going to want to do is add some paragraphs inside of the article tag and add some paragraphs inside of the aside to build out your template. You want it to look like a template. So my recommendation is you go to uh, one of those lorem ipsum sites like Bacon Ipsum or the, uh, the one that had the hillbilly text or whatever and grab some extra content. So baconipsum.com is a place where you can just go to the main page and you can generate some just random text. So let's do uh, two paragraphs, for example. We'll do meat and filler. We'll start with bacon ipsum. We click give me bacon, and then we'll have some content here we can place. So my recommendation is you just copy that and put those in paragraph tags. So I create my paragraph tag. I paste it. And these paragraphs are pretty big, so I'm going to break them up like so. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to highlight between these two, paste it in. And so now I've got three paragraphs. I'm going to take right here and generate one more. And I'm going to take the last two paragraphs and put them in my aside. So at the end, you have a bunch of these paragraphs. I'm going to take word wrap off so you can see what that looks like. So there we go. We've got four paragraphs here, two paragraphs here. Save the changes. Launch it again or go back to the browser. Let's see what it looks like in IE. Okay, and there's my page, Internet Explorer. We worked the two columns. You've got them. They line up just nicely side by side. So you've got your two columns. Um, and let's do one little, uh, I, I recommend we do something here to style the page as a whole. And that's that we create a new style sheet. And so what, what you want to do is when you have a layout, right now they have one link to the Bootstrap CSS uh, style sheet. And what we want to do is we want to add more style. We want to add some colors, like a color palette, a font stack. You probably want to add maybe some background images. You want to do some other styles that are not the bootstrap style. If that's the case, and you do want to do that if you want the A in this assignment, you're going to create another link tag, this time to an original style sheet. So I'm just going to copy this link, hit enter, I'm going to paste it, and instead of li linking to bootstrap.min, we're going to link to uh, main.css. So this will be kind of the main style sheet we can use. And we're going to use this to come up with original styles, like borders, colors, fonts, things like that. So I'm going to save my changes here. Make sure you create your link tag. And then you're going to create a new style sheet called main.css. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to create my new sheet. Because it's Notepad++, I'm going to move the style sheet to the right. And I'm going to save this style sheet as uh, main.css. I like to put, I like to start mine with a comment that says the name of the file. And you can do credits or whatever. I'm going to save it right here. Save it into your CSS folder like that, main.css, click save. And now what we can do is I'd like to style this section with the class of wrapper to set, uh, I'd like some margins on the left and right. So I'll just put dot wrapper. And then we'll set the width. And I'm going to do this as percentages, so I'm going to do 90%. And I'm going to set a margin of zero, nothing on the top or bottom, and auto, which gives us an automatic left and right hand margin. Save my changes. Go back to the page, hit refresh. And now, now I've got my margin on the left and on the right. And that's going to be nice. You can add some background graphics behind the page. Either way, it just gives you a nice little buffer on the left and right of your text. 